Because we, yes. we have a speaking order on the podium. And we will try to keep it. Okay, so it's Denny, myself, Jack Reed, Keith, and then you. get started. Thank you very much for being here. I first of all want to start with thanking Sandy Levin. Uh, Congressman Levin is from Michigan and he's the ranking Democrat on the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, yeah. Otherwise known as the guy who's got all the fans in the audience. So that's, that's terrific. Uh, today, over 2.8 million Americans are hearing from Republicans in the Congress of the United States, you are on your own. That's not what America is about. That's not what's made America great. We believe that uh, we want to care about our neighbors. We want to care about our fellow citizens. We want to care about Americans who find themselves through no fault of their own in distress. The United States Senate has responded to the plight of those Americans who find themselves unemployed and unable, although they are looking, to find a job. And so they passed an extension of unemployment insurance. Not only will they extend it, uh, but it will pay for the months that they weren't uh, able to find a job so that they can pay some of the bills that they've incurred as a result of their unemployment insurance lapsing, being taken away in effect. We are here to urge the Republicans, and particularly Mr. Boehner and Mr. Cantor, the Republican leaders, to put the unemployment insurance bill that the Senate has passed on the floor. Yeah. Give those Americans, 2.8 million, the opportunity to see who stands with them and who does not stand with them. Yes. Yes. There are over 200,000 veterans among the number of unemployed who have been unable to get a job. 200,000 people 
who wore the uniform of the United States of America and pledged to defend this country. It's now time for us to help defend them in a time of need. So I am pleased to join my colleagues as I stand here asking John Boehner for a vote, asking Eric Cantor to put this bill on the floor. Before we go home for two weeks and another 140,000 plus Americans lose their unemployment insurance. It is past time to act, but it is never too late to do the right thing. Let us do the right thing. Let us pass this bill. And now, Sandy Levin of Michigan. Thank you. We're, we're going to step up. There are lots of us here, and we have an order. I'm not sure in Congress it will be kept. But there is an order, and we'll try to follow it. I want to emphasize one point, because I've been reading some of the literature and some of the news releases and reports. This is not about votes in November. <clears throat> this, is about, this is about one vote that stands in the way of several million people who are long-term unemployed getting the insurance they really work for. The speaker has said this, and I quote, he'll take up an extension as long as it is paid for and does something to create more private sector jobs. This is paid for. And we can argue about job growth and we can argue the Republicans did not vote for the bills that helped to create millions of jobs. But this needs to be emphasized. If there were a flood and several million people were affected by the waters that flowed over their homes, we would not be arguing about flood control. What we would be saying is we should help those two million people who were victimized by the flood, and we should help the two million plus, almost three million people, long term, looking for a job with the unemployment insurance that this country really is obligated to provide them so that they have life to lead. That's our job, That's right. all of us. That's right. That's right. That's right. I just want to finish by reading a story from a woman in Georgia, 61. She said it so succinctly, succinctly. I am begging, begging, please extend the unemployment insurance and give us a chance to survive while we continue our search for employment. To be my age and be faced with no chance of surviving hardly feels like the American way that I have known and loved. Do what is good for the people of, of this country. And that's what we're saying to the leadership on the Republican side, give us a vote. Us if a there's vote. a vote, give us a vote. If, it's, if there's a vote, it will pass. And now Jack Reed, who's led the fight in the Senate and then followed by others on this list. Thank Jack. You, thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandy. Steny, thank you for your leadership, for your friendship. Months ago, not many people thought we would have a bill that would emerge from the United States Senate to restore unemployment benefits. But something happened. The voices of the American people were heard in the United States Senate. They were heard by both Democrats and Republicans. And we came together to pass a bipartisan, fiscally responsible legislation that will restore benefits to over 2 million Americans. We need to finish the work. And now that work is in the strong hands of Sandy Levin, my friend, my colleague, my mentor, and Steny, and Speaker Leader Pelosi. All these people are going to amplify the voices of the American people. This is the smart thing to do for our economy, and it's the right thing to do for American families. Thank you very, very much. Hey, thank you, Senator Reid. Thank you, Senator Reid. Thank you, Representative uh, <laughs> thank you, Representative Levin, and thank you, Steny Hoyer. My name is Keith Dellison. I'm a co-chair of the Progressive Caucus. And as you can see, my colleagues have these numbers across their chest. So, for example, Jan Sikowski 
has 153,400 people who need unemployment insurance help. Okay, R Congressman uh, Rangel has 228,000 plus. Congressman Horsford has 34,000 plus. Congressman Crowley has 228,000. Mark uh, Ticano has 514,000 and so on down the line. And these numbers are big, but there's really only one number that matters. One meal tonight for a family on unemployment. One meal tonight for a family who has been cut off since December 28, 2013, and has been looking for relief ever since that day. One family that needs to help. Now you add up those one families up to 2.8 million, and that's a whole lot of Americans. And by the way, private sector jobs, Americans who go to the store and buy groceries, and where the grocery store hires people to put the food on the shelves and unload them off of the trucks. Oh, and the trucks that bring the people there. Oh, and what about that? What about the people who sell the store, the machines that they need, the cash registers? Unemployment insurance right now will help private sector jobs all over this economy. And the fact that the speaker will not give us a vote is closing off economic viability, not just for the people who are cut off by this Republican majority, but all the people who they do business with as well. So we're here to say, give us a vote. Give us a vote. Us a vote. I want to wrap up by, by just saying, there is a wonderful person in my district, and I had the pleasure of sitting down with this person. His name is Charles Fleury, and he worked in a restaurant industry for over 30 years. But he had to leave because he couldn't afford to, to put food on the table for his three children. Charles recently obtained a commercial driver's license, but he needs more training to be eligible for a new job that will pay him enough to take care of his family. Unemployment insurance allowed Charles to get on his way to a new job, but he lost benefits when Congress failed to renew the program. He feels fortunate to have had benefits, but he cannot continue his job training without the security of unemployment insurance. Charles isn't alone. Over 22,000 Minnesotans have lost unemployment insurance since the end of December. He wants a vote. We want a vote. And one person who has been screaming and stomping and yelling and doing whatever he could do with the help of his 1.6 million members of AFSCME is my dear friend, fighter for justice, person who stands up for the working man and woman every single day, a person who won't back down, won't quit. Lee Saunders, everybody, give him a hand. Good afternoon, everybody. You know, we really shouldn't have to be here. Yet we are here. Why? Because certain members of Congress don't have the decency. They don't have the decency to do what's right. Unemployment insurance offers a lifeline. Yet the House leadership is refusing, and downright refusing, to bring this extension to the floor. Well, we're speaking loudly and clearly, bring it to the floor. Bring it to the floor. Instead, they're playing with people's lives. They really are. Playing with people's lives and forcing families to make decisions that nobody should have to make. That's outrageous, wrong, and it must end. We've been down this road before, and just like then, the ideological warriors were driving the car. This December, the ideologues left town, left town to enjoy the holidays at home without a care in the world. They abdicated, abdicated their responsibility to the people who elected them and turned a blind eye to those in need. Well, another holiday beckons, and their bags are already packed and they're ready to slam the door. That's exactly what they're doing, slamming the door on millions of our friends, millions of our neighbors, family members. Now, isn't it ironic? A group of stubborn members stand in the way of helping people who are struggling, struggling every single day to find jobs. But these cold-hearted, calculated members get paid every day for failing to do their jobs. The unemployed are not nameless. They are not faceless. They deserve respect. 
They deserve help. They deserve compassion. They do not deserve to be jerked around, jerked around for a political theater to score points with influential donors. Unemployed Americans are trying to take care of their responsibility. And it's time for John Boehner and his friends to take care of their responsibility, to take care of it. We are better. We are a better nation than this. We believe in extending a hand to those in need, not turning our backs. We believe in helping people out, not doing them in. We believe in lifting people up, not kicking them while they're down. We call on the House to do what's right. We call on the House to do what's compassionate. We call on John Boehner to bring it to the floor and let the people vote. <clears throat> I'm Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky from the 9th District of Illinois. There are so many people, there are so many people inside and outside the Congress who have been fighting for this, this that used to be bipartisan. This was not a matter of debate before. This is new and this is different. But I want to give a special shout out to Sandy Levin, who, along with his staff, has been absolutely relentless in fighting for this legislation. So, Speaker Boehner, we are all here today to say we need a vote. Give us a vote. We need a vote. We need a vote for more than 2.36 million Americans who have lost their long-term unemployment benefits, including 153,400 Illinoisans. We need a vote for Joseph from Chicago, who says, quote, the unemployment benefit is my lifeline. It means that I put food on the table, have a roof over my head, and pay for phone and internet that I need to continue my job search. We need a vote for Jenny from Morton Grove in my district who said, quote, I am not going to be able to afford the house I have, pay my bills, make sure my kids are fed, keep my vehicle. I need this money to survive. We need a vote for a Belleville woman in Illinois who wrote, quote, we had to sell our home of 23 years so we wouldn't lose it. We now live in a used mobile home. I'm 56 years old and nobody wants me anymore. I fill out applications every day, but never hear anything. Giving us a vote means passing this bill that will help these families to avoid financial disaster and it will restore $300 million that have been lost to my state, to the Illinois economy, over the past three months alone. It is time for a vote. It's time for Congress to get the job done. Speaker Boehner, give us a vote! Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Kimberly Everett and I'm 55 years old. My family, my home, and my roots are based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I stand before you today to share a snapshot of my life experience as a result of long-term unemployment. I'm a long-standing American worker, and I'm also a member of the long-term unemployed. More than three decades ago, I began my career in communications, marketing, and public relations with degrees, awards, publications, and other forms of recognition. To my credit, I've amassed a pretty impressive body of work. However, despite my background, my credentials, and the wealth of my professional experience, I've been unemployed since late. Like millions of Americans across the United States affected by the loss of our jobs, as a sole breadwinner in my family, I've not been passive or lazy in my efforts to find employment. Among my search efforts, I've applied for numerous jobs, all of which I could perform, some of which I'm considered to be overqualified. I volunteered in organizations that I hope would hire me once positions became available. I've networked and I've reached out to former colleagues from positions which I've formerly held. Given the fragile state of our economy, and in spite of these and other efforts, interviews and return calls have been non-existent and I remain unemployed. 
With each passing day, this reality grows all the more unsettling, given my unique set of circumstances. As you're aware, December 28th marked the end of the Federal Emergency Unemployment Compensation Program. When this program expired more than three months ago, I was already bracing myself for the end of the end. The final few weeks of my last emergency unemployment extension were staring me in the face. Over the course of the past few months, I've seen firsthand how financial uncertainty has affected my life and the lives of I care about. It's affected my self-esteem. There are days when I wake up and I don't always feel good about where my life path has taken me. Can you imagine the defeat and the desperation associated with wiping out my retirement and my savings accounts to barely keep a roof over my head? Financial uncertainty has made me vulnerable to the world around me. Can you imagine how vulnerable I felt when I had to use my car as collateral to get a loan with high interest rates my, just to pay my bills? And financial uncertainty has helped chip away at my emotional stability and affect my ability to think that things won't fall apart, that everything will be all right this December. I'm more than a, and in communities across the nation and in the mainstream media, 100% of our earning potential. I am not part of a throwaway population. I am not invisible. I matter. My family matters, my values matter, and my needs matter. As Congress considers the passage of legislation that will support the extension of the Federal Emergency Unemployment Compensation Program, I hope that it does so with the following Ashanti saying in mind. You must act as if, as if it's impossible to fail. Thank you for your time and attention. Yeah. My name is Javier Becerra, but I must say, Kimberly Everett is our rock. Yeah. Yeah. She is the best. Kimberly, what you just said could probably be said, maybe not as eloquently, but be said by the 2.8 million Americans who have lost their emergency unemployment insurance, the more than 500,000 who have lost it in my state of California, the more than 200,000 Americans who've lost it, who are veterans, who we made a commitment to when they put on the uniform that when they came back, we wouldn't let them fall. We want to vote. We want to vote. We vote. Now, two months ago, then Speaker Republican John Boehner said when the President tried to push for an increase in the minimum wage, that he and his colleagues on the, in the Republican conference would put up a wall to stop the increase in the minimum wage. I don't think he meant they would put up a wall. I think what he really meant to say is Republicans in the House are going to be a wall when it comes to getting our work done in the House of Representatives. They have been a wall when it's come to voting for an increase in the minimum wage. They've been a wall when it's come to the issue of providing women with equal pay for equal work. Even today, when it's equal pay day, because this is a day 51 53 years ago, 51 years ago, excuse me, when President Kennedy signed the Equal Pay Act. They have been AWOL when it's come to passing immigration reform. They are AWOL, yet they're getting paid right now while folks like Kimberly are working hard to try to find a job. That's not America. And so what we want to tell those 2.8 million Americans, the more than 500,000 Californians, the more than 200,000 veterans who these folks have forgotten, we're going to get you a vote. We're going to get you a vote because you work too darn hard not to be remembered. We will honor your service. We will reward your work. We will get you a vote. Just help us put the pressure on the Republicans who today, while they get paid their salary, are AWOL for Americans. Thank you. Right, I'm Barbara Lee from great state of California. And let me thank AFSCME, let me thank the uh, <coughs> excuse me, National Employment Law Project, all of you for being here today, but more importantly for what you do each and every day to bring some justice, really, 
to the American people. And that's what this is about. Congressman Levin, thank you so much for your tremendous day and night leadership. Constantly, you stay in, stay in the course. We couldn't be this far without you. And to all of the members here today, you know, this is, this is more than a legislative effort. This is our mission. This is why we are here. This is the right thing to do. Javier said this is not American. What this House of Representatives has not done well, quite frankly, it's un-American. To have over two million people waiting, living on the brink, begging for us to extend a lifeline to them, that's immoral, and that is downright wrong. There's a woman in my district, I'd like to just read you what she said. She's from San Leander, her name is Karen. She said, unemployment insurance helped me provide for myself until I was able to find a job. Now I am back to work and paying my taxes. Please help those who need that chance. Karen is exactly right. What you're doing here today is really helping Karen and those 513,000 individuals in California, the 2. Point, what is 2.8 million now? Almost, almost 3 million people. You're giving them that chance. And so, yes, Speaker Boehner, he's going to have to do this. <laughs> he's going to have to listen to the voice of the people. He's going to have to stand up and be a patriot because that is what this entails, is to live up to his duties and responsibilities, not only to his constituents who need this extension of unemployment insurance until they can find a job, but this is for the entire country. So thank you again for being here. We have to keep fighting until this is done. My name is Chris Owens, and I'm the executive director of the National Employment Project. I, too, want to thank um, Congressman Levin for his leadership, not just in this fight, but over the last five years and every single fight we've had to extend this program. And to Kimberly, you are just an amazing person. Um, and to President Saunders, those were amazing remarks, especially the notion that this is about fundamental decency. It's not about anything else. It's about right now we have nearly four million long-term unemployed workers, men and women who've lost their jobs, have been out of work for more than six months, and are still looking for work. And by the end of May, almost three million of those people will not have federal unemployment benefits to provide for them. And that's money they use not just to support their families, but to look for jobs and to contribute to their communities. One of those is actually one of Representative Boehner's constituents. He's from Dayton, Ohio. His name is David Heslop. And he wrote us and asked us to deliver a message to the fellow Ohioan, a U.S. Navy veteran and a lifelong Republican. I implore you, Speaker Boehner, to give the House of Representatives a vote on the Senate-passed bill to restore federal jobless aid. I am one of the 2.3 million Americans today and more than 65,000 Ohioans who have been cut off from this modest but critical aid while we're looking for work. More than three months have passed since the benefits were cut off, and now the previously unimaginable is all too real. I, like so many others, am on the verge of losing everything. My savings are gone. I am desperate and virtually destitute. Do the right thing, Mr. Speaker, and do so without delay. Give us a vote on the Senate bill to renew federal unemployment benefits. Give us a chance to get back on our feet. It's bad enough that the ideologues in Congress allowed this program to lapse at the end of last year, plunging millions of families needlessly into destitution and desperation. It would be immoral and indecent to perpetuate that by refusing to allow a vote on this measure this week. Last December, Republican leaders said they'd support an extension of the federal UI program if it was paid for. But when a bill came up to pay for it, they weren't satisfied with that. Then they wanted a short-term extension. And when they got that, they weren't satisfied with that. They wanted reforms in the program. They got them and they weren't satisfied with them. They wanted job creation. Well, everybody knows that the resources we pump back into the economy from the federal unemployment-based program is the most effective job creator we have. 
Senate Republicans negotiated in good faith with Senator Jack Reed and his colleagues, and they were able to reach a deal that meets every single one of these demands. So what now? So now, Speaker Boehner and his colleagues say they won't even allow a vote. Well, we don't believe that the fact that this is a do-nothing Congress is a reason to justify continuing to do nothing. Nothing is an excuse for Congress to fail these millions of American working families who have put it on the line for their country and who expect nothing but an opportunity to get back on their feet, to get back to work, and give back to their country again. Thanks. Congressman Joe Crowley of New York, 2.8 million people nationwide, 228,700 in New York alone. And there's one person, a gentleman named Mark, who contacted me back in December, asking whether or not we would actually extend unemployment insurance. And I said, Mark, I, I can't believe that Republicans in the House would let this Christmas time go by and allow for those desperately needing unemployment insurance to, to go without. And yet that's exactly what happened. And here we are, some three months later, still asking our Republican colleagues in the, in the House to see the light. Mark has worked his entire life. He was in electronics. Yeah, the last company went out of business, and there's been no opportunity for him in New York. He's trying to find uh, new skills to be more employed, and yet he's now 56 years old, and every door gets shut before him. He has a family. He has a house. He's worked out a deal with the bank. Uh, that happened back in December that he would just pay the interest for a few months, and then come the spring, he'd have to come up with a balloon payment. How can he come up with a balloon payment without a job and without unemployment insurance to help him meet those goals or to take care of his family? That's just one of 228,700, one of 2.8 million people in our country. But it says it all. You have to ask yourselves, what is it about the Senate that they can get together in a bipartisan way and pass a bill? This isn't the first time. But on this particular issue, how is it they can work it through in a bipartisan way and get a bill, and yet the House of Representatives, run by the Republican Party, cannot act in kind? What does it say about the Republicans running the House of Representatives? I leave it up to you to make that judgment. I'm Congressman Dan Kildee from Michigan. Yesterday, just minutes after the Senate voted to approve unemployment compensation for two million people. I filed this bill, House Resolution 4415, which is an identical, identical language to what the Senate passed. We can take this up. We can take it up today if the Speaker is willing to do so. You know, today's a beautiful day. It's the first really pretty day of spring. But for over two million people, this is not a beautiful day. This is just another day that they wake up wondering if today is the day that the eviction notice will be posted on their door. Is today the day that their foreclosure notice will come by certified mail? Is today the day that their car will be repossessed? These are real Americans, people who are struggling, who would, in a minute would take a job over unemployment compensation. But as a nation, we've always committed ourselves to fend for one another and to get those fellow Americans from their last job to their next job without starting a generational track of pain, of poverty. This is something that we can do. You know, one of the problems that we have with some of the Republicans is they say we shouldn't take this up because unlike previous periods, this is not an emergency. Well, let me explain something. If you're about to lose your house, if you're about to lose your apartment, if you're about to lose your car, if your family is about to be broken up, in order to just have a roof over your head. If you don't have enough food in the cupboard to put on the table for your kids, it might not be an emergency for John Boehner, but it's an emergency for those people. We have been called to be on their side. We have got to act, and we can do that today. Thank you. I'm Charlie Rangel uh, from New York. We've had, New York, more, New York. we've had more than our share of pain. But the wonderful thing about New York and our great country is when any group gets hurt, 
we come together as family to see what we can do. This is what our country and our Congress has all been about. Mr. Kildee has talked about how this impacts on human beings. This is a nightmare for them, a nightmare. How do you wake up and tell your children that they can't continue to go to college? How do you tell the bank or the landlord that you're sorry for another month you'd be unable to pay the rent? How about those confirmation suits that kids look forward to, or maybe the white shirts and the red tie for the assembly? How does a kid go to school and say his parents love him, but they just haven't been to work in months and they can't afford to do it? These are things that go beyond politics. It goes beyond whether they're Democrats or Republicans suffering. When we first started work, we couldn't understand why all of these deductions. We were young, but they told us this is your protection. This is your protection for pension. This is your protection for health care. And this is your protection. If through no fault of your own, you lose your job, your family won't have to consider losing the self-esteem that they can continue to get a part of that pay until you get on your feet and once again continue to contribute to those people who've lost their job. So I conclude by saying we have tried to express our pain uh, for those people going through this nightmare in a variety of different ways. But I'm going to reach out to those people who truly believe that the scriptures indicate that we have a responsibility to clothe the naked, to provide water for the thirsty, to visit those people who are sick, not to ignore people who are in jail, and to feed the hungry. And if anyone says, well, you're not going through any of these problems yourself, how proud we should feel in saying, I wasn't really talking about my nightmare. I've been blessed, but I was talking about the lesser of my brothers and sisters. So I do hope that the churches and the synagogues and the mosques would get on the phone, Republican or Democrat, and say, do this one because it's the right thing for our great country. Good afternoon. I'm Stephen Horsford from Nevada's 4th District. And uh, like all of my colleagues, I'm here to demand a vote by Speaker Boehner and the House Republicans on extending unemployment insurance benefits. And I want to thank Congressman Levin. I want to thank my majority leader, Harry Reid from Nevada, who worked with um, my Republican U.S. Senator, Dean Heller, who co-sponsored the bill with Jack Reid to move this extension forward. But now there is one person standing in the way of us helping 2.8 million Americans, 34,000 Nevadans. That person is Speaker John Boehner. And Speaker Boehner, it's time for you to do your job, to stop worrying about keeping your job and to do your job. And that is to work, to allow this process to work on behalf of the majority will of the American people and the majority will of the House. I want to thank Kimberly for bringing a face to the 2.8 million Americans who are being impacted every day by the failure of Speaker Boehner and the House Republicans to act. Because it's the toil that you're enduring that's affecting our consti constituents. I came here to work on behalf of my constituents, not to play uh, party politics with the Tea Party. And like Kimberly, I have constituents like Monty, who have worked for more than 20 years, who've paid into the system, who now expect this bridge to be there for them when they need it. And the fact that he has now been evicted because he's lost 
his unemployment insurance. He's living on rocks because he can't have that bridge. It's unacceptable, and it's why this Congress, it's time for us to act. So, Speaker Boehner, we demand a vote. Get out of the way. Give us a vote. I'm Brad Schneider. I represent the 10th District of Illinois, just north of my very good friend Jan Schakowsky. And as my friend Dan Kilney said earlier, this is the first nice day of spring after what's been a harsh winter. But for some, it's been a truly harsh winter. In January, I hosted a roundtable discussion with people who are struggling long-term unemployed. I met a young mother, 29 years old, who comes home at the end of the day every day looking for jobs, having doors closed in her face, not finding work. She comes home, she prepares dinner for her two young children, and they crawled under the covers to eat their dinner and watch TV because she had to make a choice of whether to pay the heat or pay the rent, and she chose to pay her rent. There are 153,400 people in Illinois who have lost their unemployment coverage. There are 2.8 million people in this country, and that number increases by over 70,000 every week. But those are big numbers, and every single one of them, like Kimberly, has a story. Has a story of trying to struggle to get on their feet, to find work, to be the rock that they want to be for their children. And virtually every one of them, 2.8 million, has a child or a spouse or a parent or someone depending upon them. So the number is not 2.8 million, the number is much greater. And the question we have today is, why can't the House of Representatives stand up and do the right thing? Speaker Boehner, we need a vote on unemployment insurance. I understand there will be some people who have a different perspective. Let them vote no. But I also know that the majority of us, the people who have stood here, the people who came here to fight for those of us who want to give opportunities to our families, opportunities to our children, and achieve our dreams, we will vote yes, we will pass unemployment insurance, and we will provide that bridge. But we can only do it, Mr. Boehner, is if you allow us to vote. We need a vote. Thank you. My name is Gwen Moore from the state of Wisconsin, and we have uh, 55,100 unemployed folk in my community. Uh, I was so touched by what Kimberly had to say um, because not only is she the face of the unemployed, but she's also the face of the people that the oligarchs are aiming to bring down and force her into the low-wage workforce. She has no pension, she has no savings, she's qualified, and they want to force her into the $2.18 an hour, hoping that she can be pleasant enough to get some tips. Uh, workforce, when she reaches that point of desperation. Because our enemies don't like the minimum wage at all, much less 1010. They don't like any minimum wage at all. I have such a constituent uh, in my district who is not the lazy unemployed person. She has 150 job applications later. She's lost her job of 18 years. She's lived in a house since 1986 and does not know how to pay, has not paid April rent, and doesn't know how she will pay rent going forward. The other side of this is that I, I saw Sharice standing in the crowd. Sharice, come forward with your sign. She's selling her clothes to survive. The other side of this, and Kimberly raised this point, is that we're destroying our economy by not providing unemployment benefits. Sharice would be at H&M after work today if she had her unemployment check. So retailers all over the world, all over the country, are not making their bottom line because these benefits are not out there. And, and that is why we have folks like the Chamber of Commerce trying to appeal to people like Boehner to extend the unemployment benefits because Sharice wants to shop. <laughs> I just want to applaud the seven Republicans in the House who so bravely 
have written letters to John Bader asking him to put this on the floor. That's proof that the votes are here. We just, all we want is a chance to vote uh, on this initiative. And thank you, Mr. Levin, for, for bringing this uh, press conference together. Well, thank you. We have votes. There are just a couple minutes left. Actually, we're down to zero. Thank you all for coming. If there are any questions, etc., we'll be voting, and you can all meet, reach us there, you wonderful reporters. Keep reporting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.